Hi everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Growth Tarot. I'm Denise, and as usual I'm using the Lightseer's Tarot, and this reading will be for uh, Friday, December 18th. But, as always, hopefully I'll have a message that helps us in a timeless way to heal our souls. Okay, so that's interesting. All reversals, and I, I, I shuffle thoroughly. <laughs> so, this is really interesting. Uh, so, what we have here with the Knight of Cups, and we, we had this guy in our reading for yesterday, but he was, he was over here. Um, so, there's a little bit of a theme going on, it looks like. Because with um, with the Knight of Cups reversed, you know we're dealing with uh, people who are have not been trustworthy with our hearts. Uh, someone, or you know, even um, more than one person, it has has not necessarily been um, trustworthy. And they could have been outright deceptive, even outright um, traumatizing, or abusive, or, you know, scammers, con artists, grifters, people like that. And I, in combination with the Three of Cups reverse, this, this, this could, it's possible that it's come through I, you know, like a group that you've been involved with. Um, but then again, this is another cheater card. So I think we're we're in the theme of cheaters. We're 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 working on something here, or there's messages that are coming through for people to heal, for us folks to heal, for anyone. And we've all gone through anyone that's you know probably 15 or older or oh my goodness I mean it, it's just it's one of those things that we've all gone through uh, maybe even younger than that because you know many of us have experienced betrayal from our parents and deception through our parents and our you know our um, family of origin so that kind of sets us up for having that issue you know to um, to, to heal so, yeah, because I, 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 there's no other way to speak about these cards, honestly. We're in the realm of relationships with, because we've got the King of Wands reversed and the Knight of Cups reversed. And so we're talking um, people who have not been trustworthy. L let me just dive in to, in case you haven't watched yesterday's video. Honestly, I would say... Watch yesterday's video again if you need to, um, because it it speaks you know deeply to this the, the Knight of Cups. But I'll I'll reiterate a little bit. Um, when this guy comes in, he's usually you know full of heartbreak and disappointment, and you know these are the deceivers, the scammers, like I said, the con artists, and they're very charming, and especially you know with the King of Wands here with that energy reversed. They're very, um, they can be bullies. They can, they're extremely disloyal uh, and can be, you know, ruthless. Ruthless and abusive and, and bullies. And then with the Three of Cups reverse, this is the card of, of cheaters because it's, you know, three, it's like a triangular type of a relationship. Um, it can also be, because it's the cups, you know, and sometimes uh, the card is about, well, here, let me show you in the, um, the traditional Rider way. Let's find, let's see, there's all the wands. Okay, here we go. It's the card of partying. <laughs> so it can, when it's reversed, it, it, it can be the message that, um, you know, there's a little overindulgence the night before. I, or that maybe overindulgence could be part of the, the issue. So this could be a, a, an alcoholic person. This could have been the, the, everything I see right here uh, could stem from having an alcoholic father or mother 
who is abusive, you know, like the mean drunks, like the, the type that don't, they're not, um, not, not very, um, not very fun to be around after they've had a little bit and they tend to, in combo with this card, they tend to drink on a daily basis because there's something deeper going on. You know, there's, um, I mean, alcoholism is a disease, but it's also a spiritual cry for, you know, for a life where they're feeling, uh, you know, hopeless and giving up. And, um, I mean, you know, addiction can be a very challenging challenging issue but it's also you know trying to find trying to get back to your spirit and who you are it's just that they're going in the wrong way and they're numbing out you know any type of an addiction that happens on a daily basis like that um uh, is is you know the most challenging so if that's the case if this was you know an issue with a parent then of course you might feel like you can't trust anyone and you might feel like um, you don't really have any friends because when the, when the three of cups comes through reversed it, you know this is like you know there is no celebrating and i um, now it makes me wonder too because of the fact that we're we've gone through the um or we are still going through and and it's critical we're at a critical point you know going through the pandemic uh of course we can't go out and celebrate and that that can be painful but don't let it don't let it push you back into the arms of someone who hurt you in the past just because it's familiar. That's the message I'm getting here. In your lonely hours, you know, in, in the in the times that you're, you know, vulnerable and lonely, it can be very um well, it's it's not only common, but it can be very tempting to connect because when when we've gone through really challenging times what we've what we've really been trying to find has just been connection you know connection is a real need we all as humans have real needs for love and safety and comfort and connection and to be seen and heard and understood those 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 uh, real needs are in childhood from infancy on and to the degree that they they aren't met uh, then we numb out as children. We numb out and we attach to, uh, because we have to attach to our parents in order to survive. So we attach into, you know, instead of like positive pleasure, which would be love, we'll attach to, onto the parent who is unloving just because we have to survive. And then we, we get like crosswired in our circuits and our inner circuits, uh, you know, within, we, we, don't, we don't know what's going on as children. So when we grow up as adults, if we don't meet the pain of the, you know, the painful past of our childhoods and we don't process it through, what happens is, is we stay stuck and uh, and then we reach out for substitute needs, which creates, you know, addictions of all types. You know, work, food, drugs, alcohol, uh, sex, uh, shopping. You know, I, I think I've spoken to this before. And, and, you know, retail therapy can be fun for a while, but it can be debilitating, you know, if, if you're using credit cards. But then again, who needs to blow through cash either <laughs> like that? So the key is to break the vicious circle, uh, all we have to do is to get in touch with the real pain, you know, the, the place where you didn't have the connection that you needed that was trustworthy and safe, and, and to most of all understand the real needs, because if you understand the real needs, like we all need to give and receive, you know, or be, be in the exchange of ener the energy of love and caring and um, compassion and we all need to create safety for ourselves as adults but if we haven't had safety in our childhood 
that will be the familiar, the you know, like the familiar pattern that we'll be drawn back to because we're still trying to uh, get deeper inside of it and you know unhook from it. We're still needing to meet the pain. The painful situations don't come if you don't need to meet them. So, and if they do come, what could be painful and you know was in the past, once you process them through, you're 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 like, oh well, okay, I know this one. And it's no longer painful and you walk away. Usually you're just they're just not attracted to you in the first place. You know, once once the uh, healing has occurred. So connection and to be in our creative self-expression, uh, which is what comes through, like the King of Wands straight up is very, you know, visionary and self-expressive and in their, in their power. So when your real needs have been met as a, as a little one to be seen and heard and understood, then it'll turn into your creative self-expression and this will be a really, you know, a uh, beautiful way of moving through life. But like I said, that's not the theme for today. Um, but that can happen as soon as, you know, you meet all the pain and you get the um, addicts out of your life and you don't allow them to use you anymore. The Knight of Cups reversed. I often see this card in relationships where there's been dependency and codependency, which is uh, one of the most beautiful things to work through because uh, alcoholism in families uh, is, is it's so common. It is so, so very, very common. And, and you know, we can attribute it to, like, in the, the old days uh, when, when there wasn't uh, clean water plentiful. So what they did is they made uh, beer and wine. And even the kids drank, like, 2%. It wasn't, you know, very um, strong. It, it was much weaker. At, at least, the, um, you know, the beer was. But even as children, they were growing up drinking beer because that was, you know, I mean, we have to reel yourself back in time you know, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, you know, 19th century. So it's in our DNA. And um, it's, it, that's all you need to know. It's, when it's in your, if it's in your DNA, it's going to be a slippery slope that you can fall back into if you're not careful. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with like celebrating once in a while, you know. And being with friends and family and celebrating, but if it's a daily habit, you, you know that there's something going on that you need to work with. So, yeah, I I, I think that's all I I can say about these cards. Is just that if you you know if you if you are trying to heal from from that pattern of having uh you know alcoholic parents or at least one parent there there's so much support out there and there's so many good books i um, you know what was her name i think it's melody melody betty oh goodness I, I think it was like codependent no more i don't know i have a couple on my shelf over here i just can't see so it's too far away for me to see. There's like adult children's of alcoholics. There's those books. And there are meetings, you know, ACA meetings that people can go to, which, you know, now it would everything would be online, which might be even better because it'd be more convenient and might help people who are uh, alone and isolated and needing to connect. Because when we turn to drugs or food or alcohol, um, or even like, you know, binge watching TVs, th things like that. Um, what we're really trying to do is just to connect. We, you know, we have that real need to connect. And so if we misuse these other, you know, drugs, instead of connecting with, with real, you know, on a real human level, then, um, you know, that's the thing that needs to be healed. And so getting together with people in a, in a group can definitely heal that, or even just one other person. I mean, it, to, to work with someone, uh, you know, it, it opens up the spiritual law of brotherhood, you know, you could say brotherhood and sisterhood, the law of humanity, which, which is that uh, we all need each other. We're all interdependent on each other. We all need a witness. 
you know, from, from time to time we need to, uh, well, or quite often, you know, we need to be with other people or connect with other people in a real way. So I think that's, that's the main message there. It's just that we've got dynamics of dependency and codependency and being abused and turning to something to numb out. So if we get in touch with what we're trying to numb out, that circumvents that vicious circle. So the vicious circle would be the addiction. And then when you figure out, oh, I'm really just needing connection, and then you go towards making that connection, and and every and this is why like sponsors in Alcoholics Anonymous work is like instead of going towards the drink, they call their sponsor and the sponsor's there for them, and then they have the connection. So addictions are really just connection problems, relationship problems, where we've had broken trust in the past, broken trust, and we went towards you know, the numbing agent rather than to open up because it wasn't safe to open up here. So if we find people and connections who we are safe to open to, then that circumvents that whole vicious circle and it breaks through it. All we have to do is get in touch with the real pain and understand the real needs and to remember the real needs are love, comfort, safety, connection, and to be seen and heard and understood. Now, to make yourself understood is the challenging part because when you're getting in touch with all this pain, what happens is, is you don't really know what you're feeling sometimes, and then you get in touch with what the feelings are, and then from there, uh, things can shift. And then from there, you say to someone, I realize this happened, and then it's making, I'm, you know, I'm in that place of like I was eight years old and I'm feeling, or I'm in the pain of my four-year-old or I'm in, you know, wherever you were when this, when the abuse happened, when you revisit it and you have someone hold space for you in those places, then it's one of the most beautiful things in the world. It, and it's a work I love doing the best. It's my, it's, it's kind of my thing. And um, so I, I do process sessions if anyone needs help in these areas. I, especially when you don't know what you're really feeling or when you get to that stage that, or and or, as you get to the stage where you're trying to make yourself understood and people aren't getting you. Either, either you, can't, you can't speak clearly to what's coming up within or you haven't been encouraged. Imagine being a little one and you weren't encouraged to speak up. You know, I mean, those, all, all of us my age, um, and I'm 67, all of us my age grew up with, you know, the children are to be seen and not heard. Well, with me, it wasn't even to be seen. It was just go away. So encouragement is like, you know, that that's one of those things that if you didn't have it growing up, you wouldn't know that that's the reason that um, it's really hard for you to, like, move forward. Or it's hard for you sometimes to find the right words to speak up and say, hey, wait a minute, this isn't okay. And, and this is just outright, you know, a, a, a realm we don't want to go in. So when those codependency and dependency and abuse dynamics and where, where our um, essence, our spiritual essence is hardwired, or, you know, has, cross, has cross, been in a cross current, um, as we break through all that, then our life force gets plugged back into the way it was, the way, I mean, our original beautiful essence, the way it should have been, you know, uh, that power that is there. Uh, the way that it naturally flows will will be what's happening in your life, and then you'll be able to find your voice and speak up, and you'll have the courage. And the other things that will happen are that um, you're not going to hold yourself down anymore. And then you you understand how these people work. You know, you can feel the manipulation when it comes through. And... And, and you, but you know to go the other direction. Yeah, I mean, it's because it's so easy to, to spot and see and, you know, sense and smell and all of that. 
So, and then what happens is that you have true friendship. And you have community where there's um, a beautiful exchange of the heart. And 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 then you know at some point if I'm I mean I'm never I'm just not I'm not I'm not into the whole romance thing, which is what this card is about. So I'm leery of like, you know, I don't believe in the knight in shining armor coming through on his white horse that's gonna rescue me because I don't want to be rescued, right? You want to be independent. You want to be able to take care of yourself. Take yourself out on a picnic, you know. Write yourself a love letter if you if you want to. Do buy yourself flowers. Now, when you have a loving, caring person, like if this is a loving, caring dad and uh, husband, and he brings home flowers, that's great. But he's not bringing them to rescue you, right? Because this card is functioning straight up. And if he says, "Hey, honey, let's let's go on a picnic this weekend. We've been cooped up too long with this darn coronavirus. Let's um, let's." Let's even just do it in the backyard with the kids, or if it's just you and him, let's go, you know, go to a park or where, whatever you want to do, get out of nature somehow. Uh, then that's beautiful, and that's a beautiful exchange of the heart, and that is celebratory, you know, love, heart energy, cups, right? I mean, again, cups, cups energy. It's all about relationship. So then that's beautiful, and that turns everything around. But meanwhile. You know, we we have to we have to heal from these places, and know that you're not alone. You're not alone, especially when it comes to that dynamic of alcoholic abuse on children, uh, and being in an alcoholic family. Understanding those dynamics, you know, where you'll have one good parent, one bad parent, good cop, bad cop kind of thing, and one will be, you know, I. Uh, letting the other one get away with it. So it's either the woman who's uh, dependent on the husband to make the money, but the money comes from the husband and the, and the husband is alcoholic or abusive or a raging alcoholic or, um, or, the, or the wife is the alcoholic who sits home and drinks all day while the husband does all the work of, you know, making money and keeping the house running. Or in, in other scenarios, you have cases where there's a lot of kids and the older kids do all the work in the house because the dad's making the money, but the mom's doing nothing but drinking. Those, those are, you know, sick dynamics that need to be healed. And it's common. It is so common. That's the problem is we think that we're all alone and that it's only us who's, who's gone through this and and that we're embarrassed by our family so we hide and we don't want to talk about it but that just furthers the alienation you know from ourselves and the truth is is to know that it, it's so so common it's so very common so I think I've exhausted everything I can say about this right now without having someone else here asking questions <laughs> So I'll close up this reading and um, I send you guys lots of lug, or, uh, hugs and love. <laughs> lots of love and hugs. <laughs> lugs, yeah. If we, if we put love and hugs together, call it lugs. Okay, sending you lugs. <laughs> All right, you guys. Take good care. See you later. Bye.